Good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us um, today to hear a little bit more from Okta around uh, streamlining your end users access to Microsoft Cloud Technologies. We will get started right away. Oh, I think it's uh, sorry, I think it's skipped there. There we go. So um, you'll be hearing a bit more from these people today, one of which is me. I'm Toby Noble. I'm a cybersecurity specialist here at Bytes, um, and I have a keen focus on identity um, and, and everything that entails. Okta, of course, being a big part of that. We'll then hear from Giuseppe, one of our pre-sales um, leads here at Bytes, um, and we'll wrap up with James Richmond from Okta as well. Before we start then, just the usual a little bit of housekeeping. Um, so during the webinar, you are kept on mute, but if you do have any questions, feel free to chuck them in the question box at any time. Uh, these will be picked up towards the end of the webinar. And uh, if we if we have too many, we don't get to answer them all today, we'll, we'll certainly follow up with you um, on the, the email that will be sent out after the webinar for you all. Um, and of course, as usual, this is all being recorded. You'll be sent a link to the recording after as well if you do need to recap on any points. So a bit about what we're going to cover off today then. Uh, so I'll start just with a bit of an intro to Bytes. Um, for anyone that's been on our webinars before, uh, you're probably quite used to these. Um, then I'll hand over to Giuseppe, who's going to talk a little bit around the, the Okta Identity Cloud um, as a platform and specifically around lifecycle management. Um, and then we'll hand over to James at Okta to shout about the, the latest and greatest um, with regards to FastPass um, and, and other elements that Okta are currently working on. And as I say, we'll wrap up with the Q&A where we can address any questions you might uh, want to chuck at us throughout. So to begin, uh, for anyone that's not overly familiar with Bytes, uh, in a nutshell, we are here to, uh, to, to make your lives easier with regards to, uh, to sourcing, to procuring the right solutions to tackle some of your business challenges. Um, and we do that in a whole host of different areas. So some of these areas uh, you may be familiar with, others perhaps not. Uh, some of you may know uh, Bytes as, a, as a, a Microsoft licensing house. Uh, some of you may use us for security elements. Uh, we, we may well have spoken if that's the case. Um, but as you can see from the screen here, there are a whole host of different uh, different areas of the technology stack in which we specialize and can certainly add a lot of value for you um, when working on projects within these areas. But naturally with identity being the focus of today's talk, we're gonna hone in a little bit more on the security elements there. Now, security for us has uh, has been a labour of love over the last decade or so. Um, we've gone from strength to strength in terms of what we're able to bring to the table for you. Um, and that that can come in the form of um, partnerships with, with industry-leading technologies such as Okta, um, but it can also come in the form of services and consultancy as well, which we're very strong in. Um, led primarily by our cyber consulting division, which is headed up by our, our CISO, Steve Marshall, who some of you may know. And, and from that team, we can offer services um, such as pen testing, red team, blue team, um, helping you get ISO certified, um, cyber essentials, that type of thing. Uh, a lot of consultancy uh, options there for you to consider. Um, but again, hopefully this slide paints a picture that uh, that there, there's quite a wide spectrum of security that, that Bytes can cover. But I'm going to stop talking about Bytes for a moment um, and we're going to go on to what we're all here to hear, hear a bit more about. Um, Giuseppe, I think this is your cue. Yes, it is indeed. Thank you, um, Toby. Um, good morning, everyone. I hope you are all well today. Can, you can hear me loud and clear. My name is Giuseppe Damian. I'm a pre-sales um, engineer here at Bytes. And um, I'd like to um, talk to you a bit about something called the Okta Lifecycle Management. And I do hope you find this um, topic interesting. Um, 
I will, uh, my section is divided in two parts. I will start with something called HR as a master, which is the most standard way of uh, um, implementing lifecycle management. And I will then move into the second part of my um, piece called advanced lifecycle management, where I will basically explain how to enhance this with the introduction of something relatively new called Okta workflows. And we'll also have a number of demos scattered across. So first off, HR as a master, so let's start and let's see how this um, technology allows you to um, you know, drive the most powerful and advanced way to introducing automation um, into um, identity processes in your organization. Let's start by setting the scene and if all things go well, I think we should have a poll for you. I think it'd be a good uh, idea to keep things interactive and ask you all for your opinion. You should be able to see um, a poll now. Feel free to go ahead and um, make your selection. I will give it 10, 15 seconds. And again, the questions in the poll and your values are, are meant to serve as an introduction to the topic, which is HR as a master, hopefully. Okay, last few seconds for those of you still yet to cast your opinion. And I think we should be okay. So let's see if we can see the results. Do we have the chance of seeing the results? Not entirely sure, but anyways. Um, the concept of the poll, and sorry for the organizer, Michael, here there's a screen that says organizer must hide poll results to enable screen sharing. Unfortunately, I'm not able to see the poll results um, myself. Um, okay, so the reason for running this poll and asking for um, your question in terms of how automated your um, identity processes are in your organization is to um, set the scene as I said and introduce you to what I'll be covering and in fact I'm going to continue by showing something else which I'm sure at least some of you will be um, familiar with okay this is um, a template it's an email um, sent by the um, HR department of a company to the IT team saying hello we hired someone new could you please help us by um, you know setting an account in Active Directory or Azure AD and applying the necessary access to um, to this particular new user. And as good as this email looks and as well defined and, des and designed the process is, I'm sure some of you clearly can see the flaw in such a way of uh, conducting the identity processes. The end result is that the the HR system ends up being the most accurate in your organization, is the one that has the, the, you know, the most accurate data, the most accurate information. But what lacks in the picture is the proper integration and synchronization between the HR management system and everything else, between your directory systems, between your um, SaaS applications, between your applications of all natures, okay? So what needs to happen manually is creating a ticket with IT or whatever department uh, is charged with that, who then have to go and create an account in Active Directory, create an account in Azure AD, um, give access to Salesforce and so on and so forth. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm not telling you anything new. So the um, end result is a lot of time employed, a lot of operational effort, and most importantly, an increase in human error. Users are growing, companies are growing, the number and in, in the in use of SaaS applications are growing exponentially, and all this you know, means more work, more time, and greater chance for error. So, okay, you told us what the challenge is, Giuseppe, what, what's, what solution do you advocate? Well, one of the solutions, which is the one we're talking about today, is Okta. How does Okta resolve this problem? Very simply, it's by A, integrating with all applications. We have right now over 6,000 
SaaS applications, including um, um, a number of HR applications, one of which you will see in the demo to, um, in a couple of slides, but also integrating in the same way, in a similar way, to a lot of um, directory systems, to a lot of SaaS applications. And what does this integration mean? It means that you can set things to happen automatically. You have a new employee onboarding, you create a new account in HR, and automatically, again, I will stress this word as much as I can this morning, um, things will happen and propagate into the Okta platform. And depending on how you set things up, things will happen and propagate automatically to Active Directory. Okay? And this is how you save people's time. This is how you streamline processes. And this is how you minimize errors, the chance for error. Straight into the demo, guys. I, I will not. Um, I don't want to display too many slides. So I'm about to show you a little demonstration to just um, show you how these things work in real, in real life. And for the purpose of this demonstration, I have used an Okta platform, as you would imagine. I've used a one of the many um, HR applications that exist. Perhaps not one that you uh, might be familiar with, just to show that it works on all of them. The app is called Bamboo HR. And uh, on the other hand, I have a traditional Microsoft Active Directory infrastructure. The connection with Active Directory is done by something called the Okta AD agent, which again, it's another cog in the machine that permits this kind of automation. Okay. And what the demo is about to show you is how whenever things happen in the HR department manually by your HR team, they can then get cascaded into Okta and into Active Directory in an automatic fashion, without needing for manual intervention, without uh, risking making errors or, you know, uh, causing issues. So without further ado, I'd like to sit back, relax and watch the first demonstration. Sorry, apologies, there's probably some issues with my audio. Let me just quickly.
Giuseppe, could you please let us know if your um, mic is working? Um, hello, Mike. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, Could you hear the audio of the video? No, there's no audio of the video coming through. Oh, okay. Um, apologies for that. Um, again, what you guys have missed was just the commentary of what was um, happening, just me describing the application. So just to summarize what I've done is I've, I've showed how creating two new users in uh, the HR application automatically propagated and created the users and the group membership in Opta and in Active Directory. And what is happening now is I'm doing the mover role. So I've changed the department of one of the users. And of course, what I'm looking to see is effectively um, how that this change in, in terms of group membership will be passed automatically. Again, I said I would stress the word from the HR application to Opta and into Active Directory. So let me just resume. Um, the video by the play button. So this user used to be IT and now it changes sales. Same thing now on Active Directory. As you can see, the group membership used to be IT and is now sales. So the lever process now. In fact, I'm going to take over the commentary here. So basically, we're going to terminate the employment of one of our users by using whatever um, technique the HR applications allow. So this is basically a user which will um, be discontinued from the whole organization. And this is a typical example where things are prone to go wrong because um, normally there will be an email to IT to request, um, you know, the disabling of uh, not just the directory and, and the accounts and the corporate issued apps, but also on all the other accessory apps, which are part of that user role. So this is the end of the HR process, which terminates employment. And as you can see, if you go back to the uh, list, the crafty sales user is gone. But what we want to see now is how does that translate in an automatic fashion into Okta and then Active Directory effectively eliminating the need for IT to do anything. So in Opta, we see the user is deactivated. And if you go to um, ID and refresh, we won't see the user going away, but we'll see the little symbol showing users now inactive. And this again, I'm doing refresh to just speed things up, obviously, but this is happening automatically. No need for manual intervention. And you can see now the user is deactivated. And further proof, if I right click, I can I have the option to manually activating. And um, again, thank you for um, watching the demo. Apologies for the slight issues. Um, this was a heavily trimmed demo for the purposes of time. Uh, the original version was meant to show all the, you know, the spinning cogs in the background, but this can all, you know, we can always do that for you on a one-to-one -one basis should you be interested. And um, as trivial as the example is, it, this is the reason why I chosen it because I wanted to show you that even something as as simple as um, you know synchronizing your Okta platform with your Active Directory in your app accessory apps can become um, you know a, a simple and automated process. Take IT out of the equation, take opportunities and chances for error out of the equation, and I'm sure. Some of you might be thinking right now, well, I, th I joined this webinar thinking about uh, Microsoft Cloud, and so far all I've seen is Active Directory. The reason being is that HR as a master is the standard way to do, um, you know, identity automation, and the reality of it is there are a lot of organizations which are migrating and are implementing and employing the cloud, 
uh, in the Microsoft world, but still have you know some um, presence of Active Directory. However, let's move on to the second part of my um, piece, which will now talk to you about a much better, much more powerful way to effectively do the same thing. And I'd like to introduce you to something called the Okta Workflows. What Okta Workflows do is basically, um, um, uh, they are um, structures that bring logic constructs, logic uh, routines, um, in order to perform provisioning actions on users. And if you then bring the factor of time into the equation, what you can do, you can turn things into schedules. Because it's good when you can automate cause and effect action and, 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 and provisioning and other stuff, but it's also good when you can schedule things in the future. So you don't have to set yourself a reminder and keep that element of manuality. Typical actions, um, things like set entitlements to user, create user and assignment to groups. You can assign access to folder shares, you can set licenses, you can pretty much do everything that the target application allows you to do. And if something is not existing in a canned out of the shelf form, you can leverage the available APIs to still achieve it. But what's really important is that Okta workflows are entirely user interface driven and there is zero coding involved. Let's move closer. As I promised, there will be another example. Uh, this time we'll bring Office 365 into the equation. Okay. And all that an Okta workflow is really is a flowchart, okay, where the components are um, start from a triggering uh, cause a triggering event, which is the one you see on the left hand side. You can then have one or more actions that happen as a result of this event. Then you can even introduce logic conditions, say an if then else or a loop cycle. Okay. And you can then assign further actions, further one or more actions to that logical element. So things happen, uh, will happen if or things will happen when, so to speak. With the purpose of the demo, which you are about to see in the next slide, what I've done, I've um, integrated Okta with um, an Office 365 tenant. Along the lines, I don't want to repeat the story of the HR the, um, you know, integration. That works in the exact same way as you've seen the previous one. But what happens is I want to um, I set up a workflow that automates the process of adding users, creating users in Office 365 from Okta, and add users to certain groups but conditionally, only if certain things happen. As tempted as I am to give you more information, I will shut up now and I will um, basically bring you into the demo. So. so. Just because I'm not sure if you can hear the audio or not. So this is an Okta workflow which I've created for the purpose of this demo. It's called 0365 Group Edition. If you click on it, don't be daunted. It, it might look a bit all confusing and complicated, but what you have is um, components. You have user assigned to application on the left hand side. That's a triggering course. You then have a number of relationships and links to other elements, you know, things like reading the user in Okta and then you also have um, an element to the right hand side, which is a logic condition, an if then else. So we're going to go ahead and create the user in Okta to ref to in uh, Office 365 to reflect the one in Okta. But we're also going to use a condition to say if that condition is true, I also wanted to add the user into a group just to see how much more powerful the automation. And that condition will be done by a custom variable called partner. If the partner variable is true, the user will be created and added to the group. If the partner variable is false, the user will be automatically created but not added to the group. Again, logic implementation into um, an automated identity process. Okay, and um, these are all very easily integrated. So these are all tiles. It's all UI integrated. Never at any point you'll have to. Uh, write code or write very complex expressions or sentences or logic. It's all very point and click. And once you get familiar, it gets easy. If you click on the flowchart, what you see is the workflow as a flowchart. Literally, this is the stuff you want to show to your peers to see what happens. Whenever something happens, user assigned to application, a number of actions there will be, then there's a logic 
and something else. So I'd like to show you my list of users in Okta. I'd like to draw your attention to the bottom users. There's, you might recognize the good old pesky pre-sales and crafty sales. These are new users and don't yet exist in Microsoft 365. Okay. And um, this time I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to shift over to the Office 365. I want to show you the list of users. Okay. There's no crafty sales. There's no pesky pre-sales because I haven't triggered my workflow yet. I'll also like to show you my active groups and particularly the channel partner group, which is the one that I'll use in this um, demonstration. And you can see that right now the channel partner groups uh, group has no members. Okay, so it's all very clean. It's all very greenfield now. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and trigger the workflow. How do I trigger the workflow? Very simply by adding Office 365 as an app to both users, okay? Those of you who are familiar with the auto platform uh, will be familiar with this process. Here we have an assign application uh, button in the user card. I'll scroll down to find the app I want, which is Microsoft Office 365, and um, hit assign. Even better, because I'm provisioning my Office 365 users from within Okta, here I have the chance to choose what licenses to attribute to my um, Office 365 users, I'll choose one. This is one chose for the purpose of this demo. You'll choose the one that's right for your user and then save and go back and done. Of course, this is user number one out of two. We go ahead and repeat the exact same process for the crafty user. And I'd like to stress the fact that I'm doing the exact same operation, the exact same thing for both users. I'm not doing anything different between the two. So Office 365, choose a sign, pick the exact same license for the second user, and then click done. So I've added the Office 365 application to both users. What that should have caused is that, that these two users now would have been automatically created in my Microsoft 365, and maybe conditionally one or both would be added to the channel partners group. Let's go and have a look. Let's flick back to my admin center and let's start with the list of active users. First things first, you'll um, observe that, you know, both users now have been created. I have not created those users manually. They've been created as a result of me adding Office 365 to Okta as a user. If I click into the details of this user, I can see the group membership. And as you'll see in a second, Pesky pre-sales was not added to any group, okay? Was that right? Was that not right? We shall wait and see. I'll do the same thing now for the other user, the crafty sales user, and um, that user card will be presented, and this time, this user has been added to the channel, partner, to the channel partners group. I can verify this in a similar fashion from the um, group's point of view. I think um, we can now um, check in the um, user group partnership, but really the difference is I've done the same operation for both users, but only one of them was added to the group. If I click on active groups now and select the channel partners group and um, quickly switch into the member section, I will see that only one user was added and the user is Crafty Sales. So, I'm sure some of you are wondering, well, why was that? What was the determining factor? You know, clearly both users were created, so that was the action applied for both, but what was the differentiator? And it's now, it's now time to reveal the answer to that query. The answer is the condition set in the workflow. If I click on either one of those users, say Pesky Presales, for instance, and I click on the profile, this is the, the, the Okta profile and scroll down. You notice how I created a custom variable called partner, of course, for the purpose of this demo, but I set the value of that variable to false. If the variable is false or unassigned, then the condition part of the workflow will not kick in and the action will not happen. If I repeat the same verification for the crafty user this time, and I again click on the profile. Note how the profile for both user is the same as a structure. Okay, the partner variable exists in there too, but I set that as true. 
And because the partner variable here is set to true, the condition within the workflow, whilst the workflow was running, um, was met and therefore the conditional action was triggered and therefore this user was added to the channel partners group. Okay, so this is if um, you know I list now the flow history. So what tells me that really the workflow has executed? I have a log of all executions of the workflow. There's one at 9:30 a.m., which is the one for pesky pre-sales. And the other one, pretty much at the same time, sometimes you have a minute or two of difference, there was one for crafty sales. And what I want to show you is that both executions were successful, okay? The workflow started, was triggered twice by the same action, and did exactly what it was designed to do. So, in essence, just to summarize, you know, um, this is a very powerful and extremely advanced feature, okay? Um, this is not just for adding um, Office 365 users into groups, obviously, that was just an example. You have um, an enormous amount of uh, pre-built applications and you can leverage them all as conditions or actions or in whichever part of the workflow you want. If you have a particular application which does not yet exist in the list of pre-builds, but if the application has open APIs then you can leverage that and you can bring it as part of the workflow. You can also have a lot of logic, apologies if the slide is not um, big enough to be read, but really these are the logical construct. You have if then else, you have continue if, and, and a number of different conditions that make your workflow smart, and in fact even smarter, okay? If I have to describe this in simple words, this is the closest thing to implementing scripting in your identity processes without having to create, develop, or maintain any code at all. It's all UI driven. These are just examples, guys. I'm not going to spend any more time, but you know, you have examples of um, HR processes when someone leaves and you need to sort of keep some of the accounts but disable all the corporate access. You have the typical condition, you want something to happen subject to a condition like the one we've seen in this example. And again, it's all very HR related here because you know, it's identity. You know, whenever some one is hired whenever you join a new employment, you pass your interview, you get confirmed that you got the job, you normally don't start on the following day or the same day. And generally, we want to avoid people, IT and HR set themselves reminders because again, manual intervention and error. You can automate it all, or like in the example here, you can basically set up a manual factor, one single manual action, just creating a user mailbox, mailbox and then use that as the triggering factor for every other action, every other access to happen automatically as a result. Again, minimizing time, minimizing error. And this concludes the lifecycle management part of this webinar. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you've seen how um, um, improvement, uh, how many improvements we can bring into the life of a, an identity administrator. The time is now for me to hand the microphone over to my colleague uh, James from Okta, who will then basically take uh, the line and show you um, what improvements and what um, uh, betterments you can em employ into the user experience, not just so much the administrator. So, James, um, if you're there, yeah, I'm about nice. to give you control. You should now have control if you want to double check. Uh, uh, there we go perfect i think that's gone through absolutely fine so thank you everyone for coming on to the call this morning and thank you giuseppe for going through those two big topics this morning that we've seen so far so just to summarize what we have seen so far and what giuseppe actually went through we have taken you through two major steps in the onboarding well not just the onboarding but the also the complete JML process for all of your end users within your organization. So the users joining your organization being mastered by your HR system, that's source of truth. We've also seen how we can automate absolutely everything using workflows to put in place automation where for before we would have to put a script together which would have needed maintenance and potentially changes over time as people move on between different roles. So we've seen two major roles there in terms of bringing people on board, 
We've also seen how we can manage people while they're in our organization. But the main thing we haven't seen so far is what about our end users? What about their experience when they access these applications that they've been given access to? And how do we secure the access to these applications too? So that takes me on to a couple of questions that I want to ask you. Now, I was going to do a couple of polls here, but we're not going to do those, do those now. But I just want you to think to yourselves about a question I want to throw at you. And that's how many applications do you find yourselves using on a weekly basis, whether that's in your personal lives or your corporate lives? And just take that into consideration here around what you're doing on a day to day basis and how many times you are authenticating. And then next, what I want to ask you is how much do you hate passwords? Because I have to admit, I absolutely hate the things. I, if there's any opportunity to avoid using them, I will not use them. I will use something far easier for me, such as biometrics. So using Face ID or Touch ID or even the biometrics on my laptop to be able to authenticate or even YubiKey, I'd much rather use those methods than using a conventional password. And passwords aren't secure. If you look at how passwords have been implemented in the past, generally speaking, you may have a different password policy for every single application you use. And if you think about the answer that you were thinking about earlier when I asked about how many applications you use in your personal and corporate lives, that's a lot of passwords to maintain. And you'll probably find that your end users aren't really using different passwords for each of them. They're probably just adding a different character here or there. So it's not secure at all which is why we have additional factors of authentication that we can use here. And this is why I want to take you into a bit of detail around what exciting things Okta can provide to you to eradicate these passwords once and for all. So we've seen that ideal administrator experience so far. We're gonna be seeing a little bit more on top of that as to how we can provide an even more ideal administrator experience. But before we do that, I want to give you a bit more context around what we're looking at here. So on this slide right now, we're going to be taking you through a few details about what FastPass is, what that device's platform is that Okta provides, and how these come together to not only provide that perfect end user experience, but also a far more secure experience to be managed inside of your organization. So picture this, when you're using your, either your iPad or your personal devices, or even your corporate devices, think of how many applications you use and how many times you're authenticating onto them, whether you're using a native application or web app. For instance, if you see the, the iPad on the right here, you'll see that if I am to go through this process on my own personal device to do some work while on the move, which is becoming ever more apparent, especially over the next few months as we're slowly let out, you'll see that when we use these apps such as Salesforce, we're gonna be prompted to authenticate. And then if we go and use another application, such as Concur, we're gonna be asked to authenticate again. And then if we go and use Workday, for instance, to book some holiday, because we're all anticipating doing that over the next few months, that's for sure, we're gonna be asked to authenticate again. Doing this, using that number of applications that I asked you earlier to think about how many you use, is a real burden in our working lives, when we could rather spend that time doing what we want to do, and that's doing our actual tasks within our job rather than that authentication. So what is that ideal end user experience and how we, can we provide this? Well, Okta can provide you that completely passwordless experience. But before we go into that, I want to take you through how we can do this and how it affects our administrators too. So what you'll see here is what actually is in that ideal admin experience. And there are a few things I want to highlight here. One in particular is in the past, We've not been able to see all of our devices in one centralized place. Well, now you can. You can see those personal devices that your end users are using. You can also see those corporate devices that your end users are using. You can also integrate with those vendors that you currently work with, such as MDM or EDR, and have rules put in place inside of Okta to have a single control plane for all of those. And that encompasses all of those different devices that your end users are using. If you don't want your end users to use a personal device to access some applications, you can put that control in place. But at the same time, we can ensure that your end users are experiencing a delightful and secure approach here when accessing those applications because of the policies we've put in place to access those applications. Passwords are no more. And that's where we lead on to what the ideal user experience is. 
well, of course, we want to use whatever device we want on a day-to-day -day basis. I quite like to use my iPad to do some tasks. I like to use my corporate laptop to do some tasks. I want that freedom, but I also want an easy approach to being able to access my work resources. But at the same time, we need to ensure that these are secure. And we'll go into a bit of detail in the demonstration later around how we can pair these together and show you that it is possible. But of course, when we're looking at these different devices, we want to remove any friction whatsoever. We don't want an end user to request a new device to be added to their identity inside of Okta. So I'll also be taking you through how we can quickly set up new devices against our identity, which are going to be stored in the universal directory, which we'll also see a little bit later on. So what is FastPass and where is it provided? Well, Okta provides this within the Okta identity engine. This is currently in limited GA and the functionality provided within it is quite extensive. One of which we'll see later on is FastPass. That's where we can provide a passwordless experience here, replacing it with other factors of authentication and using a zero trust strategy here to implement that. It also gives our administrators an even more ideal experience. We can limit access based upon these devices. We can limit it based on the behavior detection we had before. We also have the capability of signing particular devices out so if they're using a device to access a certain application and we think, do you know what, no more, we can turn that off. If, and we have that complete visibility of all of the devices in one single place. And that is going to be within our universal directory. And we'll see that later on. But this leads me on to that device context. Where does this fit in? Well, that device context is where we can integrate with all of our endpoint vendors that maybe we're using at the moment. And that includes Intune, and potentially Windows Defender or Windows Security Center, as it's now known. And that gives you the ability to use the information, we call them, we call them flags here at Okta, to be able to encompass those within the policies that we have on our different applications. So if you want to put a policy in place that states you can't access an application unless, unless antivirus installed on a particular device, you can do that. If you want to prevent personal devices from being used to access certain applications, you can do that too. And this is where it gives us new access experiences that we can implement on these different device, uh, different applications. We can collect the device context using Okta Verify. We'll see later on as to how that works. And that's now available on Mac OS as well as Windows, which is before it was also available on iOS and Android, as you may be aware. And by doing this, this gives us the capability of using that device context inside of our policies. Therefore, enabling us, enabling us as administrators to not only provide a seamless access experience when accessing these applications, but also control how our end users can access it and implement that zero trust strategy at the same time. So I'm gonna take you into a bit of a demonstration now of how this all comes together. So let's have a look at this and I'll give you a, a good overview here of what you can achieve with using FastPass. So I believe this video should have started just to make sure. So what you're gonna see in a second is how we can actually register our different devices. So what you can see in front of you right now is a Windows 10 device. This Windows 10 device is a corporate issued device. It's just been shipped to me as an end user and I want to use this to access my different applications. We make this possible using the Okta Verify app, which you can see on the screen now. And within this Okta Verify app, this is where we have the ability to register our device. I said earlier, it's very important we provide a seamless experience here to our end users. So we're going to provide that. And the way we do this is we simply add our account inside of the Okta Verify app and we will authenticate against our Okta tenant. What's happening here in the background and essentially how Okta Verify is working on our end devices here is it's effectively working as a very lightweight agent to collect the device context that we have on this particular device. And that's where we can take that information and put that inside of our policies for our different applications. And that for an administrator is how we can secure those applications straight away before we even look at the aspect of providing a completely seamless experience. Now, this particular Windows 10 device, to give a bit more context here, is also managed by an MDM solution. That has, we have a number of different statuses now aligned to different devices that are brought into Okta's universal directory. 
and we'll go into a bit of detail later as to how they can be collected. But firstly, I want to show you how simple this Okta Verify registration step is for our particular devices. As I said, we've, I've already registered this against my particular account here, but I'm going to take you through in a bit of detail as to how we can do that. So selecting there the use another account, the way I would register my particular device here is simply just signing in. Providing my sign-in URL there for my Okta tenant, I'll then be redirected to our web browser. I'll authenticate there. I'll provide another factor of authentication. And what you'll see is what we're about to see in Okta's universal directory here. So you'll have seen then that we've gone into our universal directory you can see my identity here. And we've also got another tab here for devices. There are currently three devices in here. I've got my MacBook Pro, which is my corporate issued device. We've also got my iPhone there, which is the J Richmond one. And then we've got this new freshly registered device, Okta Windows 10. This is the device that I'm looking to control in the demonstration today. But the main thing I want to show you here, here is how we can have all of our devices, whether they are personal or corporate issued, stored and managed from one central place. We're going to go into a bit of detail in a second as to what details are actually collected on these particular devices. We'll also see how I can provide this seamless experience. So let's delve a little bit deeper in here. But first, thing I want to highlight on the right there the actions that are available to us. And we'll see this as well when we delve a bit deeper into the devices in a second too. But these actions give us control around this. So if we select our Windows 10 device here, we're going to see a few details listed around that particular device. We can see it's active. We can see it's managed. Take, in, take note of the managed status there. You'll also see that it's a VM that I'm running on my local machine here. And we'll come back to that managed status later on as to why that is important for the experience that we're providing here. So what I'm going to do now is open up our web browser. I'm going to show you how we can provide that seamless experience when accessing applications such as Office 365. So we're going to open that up. And in this particular occasion, with the policy I have in place, I'm going to go to my Office 365 tenant, specify my username that I'm using, and we're going to select Okta Verify as my authentication process. You'll see there that I'm using Windows Hello to lock down that Okta Verify app further. So we could provide a completely passwordless experience to our end users from the moment they sign into their device all the way to accessing those applications. So you saw there that we're now accessing Office 365 and at no point did I provide a set of credentials. So a completely single sign on there, complete passwordless experience, as I mentioned to you earlier, is our aim and our ideal user experience. Now let's look at another application, Salesforce, a different policy in place here for how we provide an experience to end users. What you're going to see here is when I click on the OIE tenant button here, that's our IDP, our Okta tenant. And what you'll also see is I have not provided any prompt at all to the end user. He has simply selected that IDP, which is my Okta tenant, and in he goes as seamless as he can into Salesforce. And yet we still haven't visited the Okta dashboard. This is the same experience that you would provide to your end users on any device that they are using. So at the end of the day, whether they're using their corporate issue device or maybe a personal device, whether that's a phone or a tablet, that same experience is going to be provided. And we're going to get rid of that process of having to authenticate numerous times on a daily basis into those different applications. Now, if we visit again, over into our universal directory, we're going to take you through a few other things here, such as the policies around what's actually providing this particular experience. We saw two different experiences there. We also have seen the different devices. You'll see on the screen right now, I'm going to my identity, which is jimmy.richmond. You'll see the applications I have access to here. And we're going to go into that Salesforce application to show you the policies we've got around that. But before, I want to show you a little bit more detail on how this all comes together and how we're going to use that device as service to take the context of the device we're using, that Windows 10 device, bringing it back to what I mentioned earlier around the managed status. So we have a number of different statuses assigned to our different devices in Universal Directory now. To run you through these, we have Known. Known is a device that doesn't have Okta Verify on it and is not managed by an MDM solution. That's not this device, but in this occasion, we have a managed device here as we saw earlier. So when we go into our Salesforce application and we go to our sign on policies, you're going to see that we're going to have reference to that managed status for that particular 
device. So you'll see my different access policies here, whether it's Windows, Mac, or personal. So we can tailor a different end user experience depending on what device they're using. You'll see there the device state is registered. That means we have Okta Verify installed on it. It means I've registered that device against my identity. We also have managed. Managed means that I've integrated this with an MDM solution. In this occasion, I'm using Workspace ONE, but it's also able to be, well, we're completely agnostic in our approach for MDM integration here. So you could use Intune, you could use Jamf, whatever MDM solution you want to use here, that is fine. You'll also see at the bottom here that we're able to specify what experience the end user is going to get. And I've specified it as a possession factor. They're going to be using Okta Verify, and it's only going to happen once per device. So providing a seamless experience here to our end users is incredibly important. But at the same time, we want to make it as secure as possible, which is why we've got different policies for different devices. Now, to come back to a point that I mentioned earlier, which I want to add on to the end here, is around those different statuses for those different devices. Known is that status that means that we haven't got Okta Verify on it, and that device is not managed by an MDM solution. Those devices that were hiding away before being used by your end users are now able to be seen in your universal directory highlighting the importance to you for the controls that you need to put in place around those applications that you are using. Managed being that status where it's integrated with that MDM solution, but we can further extend this to those EDR solutions using flags. Flags allow us to notify Okta when accessing a specific application about any particular absence of software on it, or potentially highlighting that there may be malware on that device, preventing that user from accessing that application. So that was just a quick overview of what Okta, Verify, sorry, Okta FastPass is, how we can provide a seamless experience there. If you'd like to hear more details about how that comes together, how we can extend that to our administrators and our end users, then please do let me know. We can take you into a bit more detail over that. And now I'm gonna pass you over to Toby who's going to follow up with any questions you may have and any other details that you may require. Brilliant, thank you very much, James. And thank you, Giuseppe, as well before. Um, we've got a bunch of questions. I'm not entirely sure we're gonna have enough time to go through them, but we'll, we'll try and rattle through a couple at least. Um, before we do, just a, a quick note to say, um, a, a reminder that the uh, recording of the session will be sent out. If you've got any other questions, um, there are a few we, we probably won't get around to addressing. Um, we're happy to pick that up as a, as a separate conversation. And naturally, if you do want to hear more about anything that was discussed today, uh, we can arrange a follow up session uh, to, to discuss in more detail anyway. Um, one question I did want to raise to you, James and Giuseppe. Um, actually, it's specifically around the HR as a masterpiece. Um, so we've got a question here that says, how do you deal with users who need AD accounts who do not get requested via HR? For example, a temp worker who needs an account for a few days or a contractor who needs an account for three months but is not recorded in the HR database. So it's effectively third, third parties, contractors, temp workers, that type of thing. How does that, uh, uh, I suppose? Excellent. Um, um, I'll obviously try to be as brief as I can. So it, it, it all depends on whether you can identify a, a triggering factor or condition. So something has to start from somewhere. And if you remember in the, in the HR as a master demo, the, there was still a manual aspect of creating users in the HR application. So, you know, if, if you find a way to start and initiate the process, will you then automate is everything that cascades beneath? So yeah, say you manage everything from within the Okta platform, uh, what you can do is as soon as you create a user and you attribute uh, the correct role, say a contractor, what you can do, you can do things like um, automatically assigning all um, access to the applications, you can um, time that access and, you know, the limit is your creativity. But I'm more than happy to take that offline if um, the customer prefers. Perfect. Thanks for that, Seppi. Hopefully that answers the question. Um, We've got a few others. Let's uh, let's pick on a, a juicy one. <laughs> um, so again, a, a bit about the the workflows piece, uh, Giuseppe. Maybe a question for you. Can IT have an action within workflow to allow account to be created? Um, so presumably, kind of um, stepping in there as as a, a kind of a bit of a manual process in in what is otherwise automated. 
so I can I can step in here and, and help on that okay. one as well. So with the so I'm assuming you're meaning some sort of approval workflow there to gain approval from a number of managers, maybe a number of different levels. To answer that, yes, it can be done. Now the integrations at the moment allow you to do that with maybe Google Meets, with Slack. But as Giuseppe highlighted in his presentation, if it's got the API capab capability there, we can use pretty much anything to potentially message a manager about a potential change or asking them for details on how long they want an account to be available for. And then incorporating the logic and the timing there, we can have that notify them again at any stage of that process of a user being onboarded or offboarded. Brilliant, brilliant. Thanks for that, James. Um, just looking to see if we've got any others. I'm conscious of time, though. Uh, there are three or four others that, that we'll look to get addressed. What we'll probably look to do, though, is we'll put a bit of an FAQ um, together on the follow-up email that will have the link to the recording. Um, so, so everyone will have the opportunity there to, uh, to see the, the questions and responses, if that suits everyone. Other than that, I'd like to thank our speakers. I'd like to thank Everyone has attended and taken an hour out of their morning, always appreciated. Um, and we look forward to, to continuing the discussion with you all. But thank you very much for your time and uh, have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Ron. Thank you.